Two more Best Ball Mania 4 drafts on tap this morning. Our last drafts in the month of July as we enter the home stretch. It's number 106 and number 107 as I continue my quest to stream all 150 of my Best Ball Mania 4 drafts. It's Best Ball Breakfast. I'm Pete Overzet. Let's do it. Oh, another Influencer 101 for the Backward Hats, bro. Rig! Zach Ertz with no Tyler Algier bring back? Yikes. You reached a round for correlation? That's a no-no. You ADP bros disgust me. How about you just live a little? Handcuffing might actually be a way to get unique if the field's avoiding it. The Wi-Fi at this resort is a disaster? These fucking streamers don't have player takes. What if a piss boy draft is the room you need? Oh! All right, GMs, GMs, GMs. How are we doing? Look at them. Tom says... It's grind your cock off season. I suppose so. It is It is insane that it's about to be August 1st. Um, I know when I set out to do this challenge, streaming all of these drafts, it, it felt like a long time ago. Pat and I kicked it off on that opening night there uh, toward the beginning of May. I believe our subscriber count at the time was 12.7, I want to say, 12,700. We're about to hit uh, 14.6. So we have almost added... 2,000 subs since we kicked this off. As you guys know, when we hit 15K subs, which feels so, so close, we will be doing a $1,500 giveaway. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. And anytime you leave a comment on one of my stream drafts, you do get entered into that giveaway. We're so close. I'm so excited to be done with this promo. I just want to give the cash and then we can just draft and live our lives without begging people to subscribe to the channel. So we are almost done with this. I'm sure you guys are excited for that to be over as well. People are liking the thumbnail, uh, calling for the avalanche. So yes, there's a reason uh, for this thumbnail, and it is that today you guys have heard me tease. I have a new video coming out on the Deposit Kingdom YouTube channel. So this is my main YouTube channel. I use it for all of the live streams. I have another channel, the Deposit Kingdom YouTube channel. That's where we posted the Week 17 is All That Matters video from last year. We did the anatomy of a million-dollar lineup looking at Karain and King Capitals. All of those videos are over on that channel. And today, I'm releasing a new one titled how to combat a wide receiver avalanche. So obviously these are things I've been thinking about a lot as I've been drafting uh, on these streams all summer. My rooms are very avalanche -y, So I wanted to uh, explore some tactics, some that we've drafted on stream here to handle these avalanche drafts. And I worked on that with Rotoviz's Michael Dubner. So some strong tactics, lots of evidence-based ways to build juggernaut teams in Avalanche Rooms. I believe I have that link to the Deposit Kingdom YouTube channel pinned here in the chat or in the description. Get subscribed. I think I'm going to post that right around when ADP chasing ends. So you got Best Ball Breakfast from 10 to noon. Then you got the fellas over at ADP chasing. They're actually having JJ Zacharyson, aka the late round QB on today. They'll be talking about the Jonathan Taylor stuff and also players that JJ is higher and lower than uh, versus the market. So you can check that out. And then when that ends, hop over to the Deposit Kingdom YouTube channel and that video should be up, how to combat a wide receiver avalanche. So there you go. I just plotted out, you know, half of your day for you with great fantasy and best ball content. J Mike says, Pete, what's one highlight from your weekend? One highlight from my weekend. Let's see. It was my father-in-law's birthday. I would say a highlight was, uh, we grilled steaks, uh, filet mignon. I know. And, um, you know, normally, Everyone just has one filet, but my mother-in-law at the uh, at the meat store got me an extra filet. So I had two filet mignons. I was like, this would have cost me, you know, a, a hundred plus dollars in a restaurant. So I got to have two filet mignons on uh, Saturday night. So that was definitely the highlight of my weekend. Um, Frog says, can we give me props for putting the baby down for a nap in sub 10 minutes? She was sleepy. Hey, that speaks to my soul, Frog. Anytime that nap is happening easily. It is music to my ear. So congratulations, Frog. I'm hoping you can now settle in for, let's see if your baby can give you a, a nice, you know, two hour nap here. So you can get all of best ball breakfast here. Um, are we going to the beach? Are we going to beach each other off this morning? Yes, I, I did get to see uh, Barbie on uh, Friday. Had an incredible Friday because I went from setting the world record with 11 Deposit Kingdom drafters for the world's fastest slow draft. We accomplished that in blazing speed, nine minutes and 24 seconds. We did it. We crushed the records. 
And you guys can check out that live stream from Friday. And then I immediately went from that to seeing Barbie at the theater. So I had just a very frenetic, uh, chaotic uh, Friday, but it was a, a very enjoyable movie experience. I thought the Barbie movie was really well done. Loved the set designs, the costumes, the performances were great. Some of the like, the the language like was a little preachy for me. I thought they could have done some like more show don't tell elements with it, but I don't want to nitpick it because it was just fun to go to a movie. And uh, I thought Greta Gerwig had a very nice vision there. Let's see, I'm trying to catch up on the chat. Uh, Electric Stream Friday has the Guinness World's Records plaque uh, arrived yet? It has not. Um, for some reason, it seems like they are not fully acknowledging what we accomplished. So. Our interns and our team are behind the scenes working on rectifying that. We'll be sure to let you guys know when we are acknowledged by uh, the Guinness World Book of Records. Kelsey just subbed. Welcome. Thank you very much. I'm trying to catch up on the chat. Uh, another you know, breaking news thing here. Cold Brew Week is done for now. Okay, We did back-to-back -back Cold Brew Weeks. It was controversial. One of the days I messed things up by having a plastic cup instead of my glass cup, which was a Guinness draft, by the way. You see all the synergies here. It was Chekhov's uh, coffee mug. Whatever. Uh, we are back to hot coffee. We're back to hot coffee. So let's give the people a pour. You guys want to pour? I know some of you guys were missing that hearty, thick, poor, and uh, I'm happy that I could do it for you. I am happy. I, I felt bad, you know, that I disappointed some of you guys the other day by not, you know, having the hot coffee pour. But look, it's been very hot here. I've needed to uh, be flexible, and that's part of it. Um, I have just hopped in a draft. I tipped people off in the Discord. It's snap filled. Let's get all of our ducks in a row so to speak here what did we get still no early draft slots one seven one seven in jgfc on my left sounds like hell oh and look at this chess liam chess liam logging in from the hot tub to draft with us very nice sam duel i believe you just got the badge sam i don't remember you having a badge before congrats on your badge um let me get my overlays up and adam there we are looking good. Let's get a little banner going. Draft number, what is this? 106. 106. There she is. There she is. I think we're good. I think we are good, folks. Let's make sure the board's looking nice. Can we see all the drafters? Okay. All right. I think we're situated. I believe we are situated here. John giving me the stamp of approval on the poor. All right. Wow. The chat coming back with the poor here. Uh, Tyler says, Pete says we alienate women, yet I see more subbing and chatting this AM. Curious. Welcome all. You know what, Tyler? The bonk bros, you know, you guys live in a dicey space in this current uh, societal landscape. So uh, I'm glad the bonk bros survived getting canceled on their first big stream appearance, but keep it in line. Keep it in line. Uh, TA, thank you for becoming a YouTube member. Appreciate you. I'm on the clock here. Uh, I need to get my uh, my caddy up here to remind me my exposures. Let's go ahead and let's do Eckler. Mm. Uh, as always, if you guys become YouTube members, you can get tipped off when I enter these drafts in the Deposit Kingdom uh, Discord. Um, your membership unlocks the private Best Ball Breakfast channel, which is also what I use to help find my 11 other world's fastest slow drafters. It also gets you access to the best ball after dark stream drafted with Liam on Friday night after the randomizer. And uh, we drafted a, a pretty wild team. It was a team of players. I did not like, we took Mike Williams. We took Odell Beckham. We took Michael Thomas. So if you want to see how that unfolded, you can become a YouTube member and check out all of those videos for YouTube members over there. Mm. <sighs> yeah, Liam claims he didn't know he was getting in this room. This should be where I get my Dalton Kincaid share. I should do it. Mm. Are the badges for like within a calendar year? No, you can go into the uh, 
into the rules there and you can if you if you just google uh underdog badges or whatever you'll get taken to the page and you can read the exact criteria for getting a white badge and a red badge it is not based on a calendar thing um what crazy stuff do we have going on we got uh pollard we got adams we got waddle we got garrett wilson here Let's see what jake twitch does at the two five nick chubb's sticking around i might have to grab a nick tub nick chubb start here two percent nick chubb all right jake twitch takes takes him here i also have one percent barkley uh i'm gonna take a lave though because uh i do not have I don't know how much Eckler or Lave I have. I'll have to check out the Fantasy Life Best Ball Hub. I don't think I have a ton there. But the real question now is, where is where's Jonathan Taylor going to go? I've started to see some screenshots online. Uh, Herzig posted a screenshot from DraftKings. Davis posted a screenshot of getting Taylor at the 2-3 uh, the turn. So I'm very curious to see where drafters are pushing Jonathan Taylor to now. I do think like in general, it's a, it's pretty funny to just watch the market react. Like the market wants to react to things so badly in either direction. They're like, we, I, I want to draft this guy ahead of where he's going, or I want to draft him where he, below where he's going. And it's funny that people are processing the Jonathan Taylor news as something to react to in a negative way, because it seems like a holdout is honestly very unlikely. And it seems if he did get a trade, that it would be to a better team than the Colts. So I'm not, I'm kind of confused why his ADP is going to drop. So I will, uh, as usual with the Brees Hall stuff, uh, with the, any of these running backs, Ramondre, um, any of the guys threatening to hold out, I'm going to continue to buy the dip on that. I think if you look at all the holdout risks in the aggregate and you sum up, like what is the percentage chance that this cohort misses any games? I think it's pretty small. I think if you're getting it in good, it's continuing to buy these guys at a discount and then reaping the rewards when they put their tail between their legs and they come back to training camp. So stuff does look very messy with the Colts right now. And Jonathan Taylor, you know, there was a report that the team came out and said he had a pre-existing injury that he showed up to camp with. And then Jonathan Taylor fires back last night and says, I don't know who this source is. I don't know what you're talking about. So there's certainly bad blood there. Um, but I still continue to be skeptical that it is going to result in something that should actually lower his ADP. Um, all right. We are about to pick here at three, seven. We see Debo Metcalf, Jalen hurts come off the board. JGFC takes Gibbs. Um, we just going to keep drafting these like we normally do and take Ramondre here. People starting to get very spooked about Ramondre having competition um, I don't see anything else I need to do here. Let's do, uh, let's do Ramondre with Eckler. That photo of Mac Jones out to dinner with Zeke Elliott was so funny out in Seaport and they're sitting on the same side of the table with no one on the other side. That configuration on a date, like always made me very uncomfortable. It just, it, you're, you're supposed to look and talk to whoever you're out to dinner with like the being on the side thing, I guess like if you're in Europe and you're at a little cafe in Rome with your lover and you guys are people watching and drinking your cappuccino. Sure. Maybe you sit side by side, but if you're out to dinner and you're trying to woo Ezekiel Elliott to the Patriots, you guys are side to side. You're eating your linguine and then looking over to talk to Zeke Elliott. I mean, what are we doing? What I'm trying to say is the way they were positioned at dinner does not have me worried about Ramondre's ADP. Mm. Yeah, Liam says Brees is going late for sometimes. I am going to try to be a little patient with Brees, try to get some of these fourth round prices, but that does not happen in this room. Jake takes him at pick 32. So my start here through three rounds, Austin Eckler, Chris Olave, Ramondre Stevenson to start. I, the, the thing too, even with the Zeke with Ramondre, it's like Ramondre already dusted a far better plotter than Zeke Elliott. He dusted Damian Harris last year, took over that backfield. Um, if you're worried about Ramondre not being able to dust Zeke Elliott, who is far, far dustier than Damian Harris, 
then you never understood the thesis of the play to begin with. JGFC says that best ball after dark combo with Liam was great. Thank you. Yes, I've been really enjoying those. Liam and I had a, a ton of fun on that one. Let's go ahead and grab Judy here. Judy falls a couple picks past ADP, plus we get that week 17 correlation with Eckler. Feels good. Liam had some hilarious stories uh, about playing at the World Series of Poker this year. And his, uh, what was the phrase Liam used about his uh, punchable face equity or something like that? Uh, always enjoy catching up with Liam. I will continue to have uh, best ball after dark shows for YouTube members. Um, and I, I believe the plan is to keep them rolling even in season. I don't know if we're going to rebrand it at all. Maybe fantasy after dark DFS after dark, what have you, but have really enjoyed that format. If you guys aren't familiar. So basically what I did, it started out as like, I was just going to draft a team for the YouTube members, but then it kind of turned into an interview series where I'm either getting to know new people in the industry, like when I had Eagles on uh, a few weeks back, or catching up with old friends like Liam, like Adam Levitan, and continue to get good feedback on those, really enjoy uh, the conversations there. So if you guys like these streams, if you want to see more drafts, if you want to see us, let our hair down, so to speak. You can become a YouTube member and get access to that entire archive. I think we're pushing uh, almost 20 of those videos up there from this off season so far. And we'll keep those rolling here going forward. Also in the process of kind of finalizing my in season schedule as well. You guys have probably heard me talking about it on some of these shows. Uh, talked about it. I think a little bit on lulls talked about it on some of these best ball after darks, kind of thinking through what my DFS programming is going to look like this year. So I'll have more updates on that as we get closer to the start of the season, but definitely going to keep those videos rolling. Let's see what JGFC does here. He takes fields. I will continue to just kind of scoop up wide receiver value in this room. Uh, DJ Moore, not a guy seemed to get a ton, only at 7%. He slides here to pick 55. Um, I'll go ahead and take DJ Moore here. The other kind of news-based thing I'm interesting to see on these prices, uh, obviously we got news that both Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet are banged up. Um, it doesn't seem like either are at risk to miss time in season, but you never know with how these things go. Sometimes the injuries linger. Sometimes it becomes a non-issue. Like even Kenneth Walker got hurt with the groin last year around this time. People panicked, his price dropped, and then he ended up still being obviously a league winning selection. So I'm just going to try to be patient with these guys, guys like Dobbins, Walker. Um, I'm not going to cross them off my board, but I am going to try to get better prices on these guys. So through five rounds, Austin Eckler, Chris Olave, Ramondre Stevenson, Jerry Judy, and DJ Moore. Touch of Green, who always asks about Crack Rock. Yes, we are on the books to do a draft with Crack Rock on ship chasing later in August. I believe the date is Thursday, August 24th. You can mark your calendar, Touch of Green. We will be getting uh, back in the saddle with the world's foremost uh, Mara Largo slash NFL owner insider, Crack Rock. Mm. All right, Lyndon's excited about my quad correlation, 1617 New England, Buffalo, Denver, LAC. Ooh, you don't have to twist my arm to draft a New England Patriot. Uh, Kenneth Walker does go there at pick 64. Nothing we need to do with quarterback here. Not tempted by any of the running backs in this spot. Um, I have a shit ton of Tyler Lockett and Mike Evans, who I've been actually trying to take my feet off the gas a little bit. This room hasn't seemed quite as avalanche as I initially thought. You know, when I get Judy after ADP, DJ Moore, eight picks eight after ADP, Let's, uh, let's grab some Kyle Pitts. It's been another one of my objectives here to boost my Kyle Pitts exposure. I believe it said I was at, what, 11% right now? Um, so, yeah, I, I want to get that Pitts up. I, I would love to be double the field on Kyle Pitts. We also have DJ Moore with that week 17 correlation here. So, uh, Kyle Pitts, a few picks ahead of ADP. We might have to get creative with our wide receivers, which is uh, an evergreen statement, but... Hey, if I say I need more Kyle Pitts, it's going to have to come at the expense of not selecting Tyler Lockett or Mike Evans for the millionth time. Mm. 
J. Mike says, since going through your BBM deep dive of exposures, yeah, this was a show I did after uh, draft 75 a few weeks back, if you want to look for that on the channel. How well have you stuck to the adjustments you wanted to make? Yeah, I, I think I've done a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. I've started to balance out the Howell with more Ritter and um, Brock Purdy. I have started to grab more elite tight ends and Kyle Pitts and Waller and George Kittle, which was a big objective of mine. I have started to uh, tilt my exposures in favor of JSN over Lockett. I had more Lockett before. So I, I need to go refresh um, my objectives and look at them again. But most of the things that I kind of earmarked as stuff I wanted to do, I've been pretty good about, about making that happen. It's still really hard in my rooms to be able to pull off true zero RB. That's that's the one. Um, I've been able to do it on, I did it on a swole cast draft um, and some other spots. So I still want to get some more zero RB teams. But let me see here. Um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and take Quentin Johnston here at pick 79. Uh, we'll just build out this Denver and Chargers game stack without the without the quarterback. So we had Quentin Johnston to the mix. So we have two running backs, Austin Eckler, Ramondre Stevenson. We got four wide receivers, Chris Olave, Jerry Judy, DJ Moore, Quentin Johnston, and tight end Kyle Pitts. Our late stacking options for quarterback, obviously no Herbert uh, available to us and no, uh, but otherwise all the quarterbacks. So you could do something with Mac Jones, Derek Carr, Russell Wilson. Oh yeah, no Justin Fields, obviously. And then Desmond Ritter. Mm. We got Phil's got the link for you guys. If you do want to become uh, YouTube members, I multiple people told me the uh, the membership is too cheap for for all the content. So do with that what you will. Luckily for you, I'm not raising the prices, but very good bang for your buck on the amount of content that comes included with that. Chris says, "Have Dolphins running backs been rising since Dalvin to Miami seems less likely." Um, I haven't noticed it a ton, but I also haven't drafted, uh, for a few days. So you guys can let me know. Um, it's still bizarre to me how drafters seem to have like very little interest in, in Raheem Moster and, uh, in Jeff Wilson. But it does feel like to your point, Chris, that the second Dalvin Cook signs somewhere else, I do think the market will react at that point. And then everyone's going to be sitting around saying, wait, what, why wasn't I selecting these guys, these guys more? Which that's why I think that is a place of the market being irrational, right? There's only one Dalvin Cook. There's three landing spots that um, in the betting markets are the most likely. And yet ADP sliders are being attributed to all of those, even though there's only one Dalvin Cook, which I, I get that the market is fearful there. But I do think not pushing those guys down more than they should, or at least not double counting, would be the way to play that spot. All right, let's see here. Kadarius Tony sliding. His ADP still hasn't caught up. I don't want any of these running backs. Um, we could start to. We are even on Bateman and Sky. Still been enjoying getting some Bateman here in this range. And we'll take Rashad Bateman here as our fifth wide receiver. So through eight rounds, Austin Eckler and Ramondre Stevenson. Wide receivers, Chris Olave, Jerry Judy, DJ Moore, Quinton Johnston, Rashad Bateman at wide receiver, Kyle Pitts at tight end. I had to take Rashad Bateman so I can justify selecting a Miami running back later. Holy shit. Stochastics raw projections put most at a hundred spots ahead of ADP. Hmm. Hmm. Appreciate you, Nick. I don't ever support, or I, I don't ever support, I don't ever sub to any YouTube channels or Patreons, but you're damn right. I've been a devout Pete supporter for almost two years. We appreciate you, Nick. Um, Yeah, this, the Moster, I, I don't, I, I love all those guys. I, re, I really do. I still find Moster and A-Chain to be slightly negatively correlated. I do really think like the, the smash Moster seasons and the smash A-Chain seasons are probably at the expense of each other. But it's still just crazy to me. Like, Jeff Wilson Jr. is the goal line back, presumably on the Dolphins, right? It, does, does someone think someone else is a goal line back? I mean, A-Chain weighs like 150 pounds. Mostert has never held up 
to significant carries. Like Jeff Wilson is the goal line back, the goal line back of what will be a top seven or top eight offense for as long as two is healthy. And you can get that player at pick 180 in some of these drafts. It's one of the, the most baffling things to me. His role seems so solidified on this team. Watch Dalvin Cook sign right after this. Just, just it's, You're going to have that clip, and then you're going to have breaking news. Dalvin Cook accepts a one-year $800,000 contract to return home to Miami. And then you clip it. There you go. Hmm. I'm not fudding Jeff Wilson. I'm pumping his bags. <clears throat> All right, we're about to be on the clock at 9-7 here. I might, I'm starting to consider a little unstacked Tua. Hmm. Charbonnet, I want to pump the brakes on. I guess we could do Dylan in this range. Let's push. Let's take Dylan and just see if uh, if no drafter wants to take. Where where are the where's the Tyreek Hill drafter? So Bradini let let him go by because he took Hertz. And then where's the Waddle drafter? Chappie. And then Chappie took Lamar Jackson and Deshaun Watson. So it does seem like we are headed to someone taking to a unstack. Because I would be pretty surprised if Chappie added on to a... I'm so confused Like when drafters do that. I'm really confused. When you have your, your second round pick is Waddle, you also have... I get it, you took Amari Cooper, but man. A lot of, a lot of people still are just very spooked by Tua, I think. A lot of people. He's going to get injured. He's going to get injured. Well... You're drafting a team in a contest with 600,000 people. So maybe draft a team where you pretend he doesn't get injured. All right, there goes Tua. Sam takes Tua unstacked. I was going to do it if he came back. He had the Zay Flowers. I have I had the Rashad Bateman. Tyler, yeah, what's going on? Is the like button sticky? We got... 450 plus people watching. How many, how many likes? Please like the stream for Tyler and for me. So how far is Sharp supposed to be dropping, right? How far is Sharp supposed to be dropping? Is this too much? Zach Charbonnet, ADP of 103.8. I'm about to be on the clock at... 114 trying to see if there's anything else here that really stands out. I have been trying to like boost my Nico a little bit. Hmm. I'm sorry. I, I love Charbonnet too much to, uh, to pass up on these flash sale prices. I'm taking Zach Charbonnet. So we have four running backs now, Austin Eckler, Ramondre Stevenson, AJ Dillon, and Zach Charbonnet. Mm. I I did see the I do think Kenny McIntosh is on the deep sleeper radar. He was a prospect some people liked. He's there's lots of training camp footage of him making big plays and then you have the two lead backs who are banged up right now. Like I do think Kenny McIntosh is on the super deep sleep, sleeper radar. But it doesn't mean I'm going to stop drafting Charbonnet and Kenneth Walker. So basically what we saw here based on current ADPs, Walker had what? Like a six pick slide in here. He's normally going at 56, 57. He falls to 64. Charbonnet had about an 11 pick slide. I guess those reactions seem fair. The only thing is, is the second we actually get confirmation on it, on the news, like it's going to be very polarized. Like the news is either going to be bad and these guys are going to like plummet, like Kenneth Walker set to miss the first quarter of the season or whatever, or they're going to say Zach Charbonnet will be back on the field shortly or whatever. And so in my mind, I'm trying to think what's more likely the ADP bottom falling out on these guys or things just snapping back into place. And for the rest of best ball mania drafting season, you're not able to get Charbonnet at 114. I'm making the calculated risk that 114 is going to be 
more of an anomaly. But man, some of these ADP reactions, no one wants Samaj P. Ryan anymore. That is crazy to me. I will take Samaj P. Ryan at 127 if no one wants him. Okay, the neighborhood takes him. Mm. Mm. Khalil Herbert at the top of the queue. Let's grab Dolchich. Dolchich with Kyle Pitts is a fun one. Mm. Omar likes this team so far. Uh-oh, what am I going to do to ruin it? Uh, new injury segment, groin watch. That would be perfect for the bon Bronx bros. <sighs> wow, now we're really getting our hands in the dirt. Walker always has groin issues because he runs parallel to the ground. How do you run parallel to the ground? Like, how is that even possible? What does that mean? Parallel to the ground? Feels, feels hyperbolic. Parallel to the ground. I, this is why I'm not a film watcher, because I can't come up with imaginative ways to describe what's happening that literally defies physics. I need my running backs who run perpendicular to the ground. <laughs> and, and then then we even have a worse take everyone runs parallel to the ground no everyone runs perpendicular to the ground this is we're going to do a geometry lesson here at class today <laughs> nolan runs isosceles there we go do we get some equilateral triangles yeah everyone stop being so obtuse <sighs> All right. God damn it, Sam. Seriously, Sam? Russell Wilson as your third quarterback? It, it, is it time for me to tilt? Sam, that pick makes no sense. You have not a single Denver player. Oh my God. You what is Sam, what are you doing? You misclicked Baker Mayfield and then panic selected Russell Wilson? Sam, you just got your badge. What are you doing? Sam, first of all, Russell Wilson was supposed to be mine. What are we, what are we doing? Tua unstacked, Baker Mayfield at pick 132 and Russell Wilson. Sam, are you in the chat? What's going on? What's going on? Goodness. All right, guess we need to start building out some backdoor stacks here, guys. Goodness. All right, we'll take Jonathan Mingo. Man, that I, I like, I, I just, I got cocky there. I was like, oh, I'm for sure getting Russell Wilson. I'm looking at these teams. Liam already has two, his two there. Also, can we just check in on Liam here? Josh Allen, Dalton Kincaid, where do you get your ideas? Um, there, there's a, t there's a username here named Sick Fart. Sick Fart from the 10 hole uh, had Anthony Richardson. He didn't have any Denver guys. Chappie had Lamar and Deshaun Watson. Sam, you are killing me with that Russell Wilson auto click. You are killing me. <sighs> Sam drafts perpendicular to ADP. Oh my God. My the first thing my eyes gravitated to was the Russell Wilson, and I was like scrolling to see if he had any Denver players. And I completely passed over Baker Mayfield at first. And then I was like, oh, this we have far bigger issues here. This, this looks like a Davis Maddox star mistake. How many, how many teams has Davis Maddox ruined because of his star trick? I mean, he, he has Chris Godwin and Rashad White, right? So he clearly puts Baker Mayfield in the queue to flag as a later selection, right? This Davis Maddox Star Trek is out here destroying teams. Davis Maddox is our advancement rate king. He's out here boosting all of our advance rates. Mm. We love you. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. This Star Trek, it is the greatest scam in the history of best ball touts. I don't even use the star trick when I'm not drafting on stream. There's too much risk.
There's too much risk. I do take Derek Carr to stack up with Chris Olave. So my team here through 13 rounds, Derek Carr at quarterback, running backs, Austin Eckler, Ramondre Stevenson, A.J. Dillon, and Zach Charbonnet. Wide receivers, Chris Olave, Jerry Judy, DJ Moore, Quentin Johnston, Rashad Bateman, and Jonathan Mingo. Tight ends, Kyle Pitts and Greg Dolchich. Mm. Uh-oh, Sam's in the chat. Okay, hang on. Breaking news, Sam's in the chat. We're about to read his PR statement here. dun 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 We have located Sam, who's ready to speak on his controversial selection of Baker Mayfield at pick 132. Russ was my back stack with two Charger bringbacks already. Baker was an 18-round pick if I wanted to go third QB. Got the Q mixed up, and here we are. Are we satisfied by this answer, guys? Are we satisfied? I don't feel satisfied. I don't feel satisfied. I'm angry. I'm angry. I bl- j- Just blame the Matic method. Sam, redo it. Redo it. Say, I just talked to my publicist. He wants us to retract our previous statement. We have a new statement. That new statement is, Davis Maddock taught me this one simple trick, and it ruined my team. (laughs) Sam's PR team had to conjure that response up quickly. I'm telling you, you got to go the Davis Maddock route with that. Um... All right, so he does take Marvin Mims there. So you're building out that back stack. You better take Durham Smythe. If you're going to take Tua, you better take Durham Smythe. That's all I'll say. That is all I'll say. I could have done the Goff Laporta stack. I saw someone mentioning that. I could have gone with like the three interesting tight ends, Kyle Pitts, Greg Dolchich, and Laporta. But uh, didn't, didn't head down that route. All right, I don't get a lot of Shahid. Um, got Derek Carr. Let's stack up, uh, Derek Carr with, uh, Rashid Shahid and Chris Olave. So now we got that double stack with Carr. We're at a one, four, seven, two build. Good at tight end, good at wide receiver, good at running back. We'll just have to, uh, to find some quarterbacks here, but we got options. We got options. Tyler continuing to pound the table for likes here. I'm I'm trying to get subs. I want I want subs, but Tyler's one step ahead of me because how do you get subs? You get likes. The YouTube algorithm wants you to feed them these little likes. Like 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 like, and then they go, "We'll give you, we'll put your video out in front of these people." But they got to be fed the likes. Feed the likes, get the subscribes. That's YouTube 101. Hmm. Now, okay, Sam's Sam's PR, they've come back with another non-Davismatic angle. I'm maxing this thing. Shit happens. I like the Deposit Kingdom so much that I wanted to donate $25 to show my appreciation. We're getting warmer. <laughs> Sam Duel, the spin zone from Sam Duel. Trust me, I know Laporta's a beast. How much Laporta do I have? 15% Laporta. That seems like a nice amount of Laporta. Seems like a nice amount. All right. What are we going to do to stick this landing? Four more picks. One of them definitely a quarterback. Everything else is up for discussion. Everything else is up for discussion. I still, I need to, I need to actually like read an article about the Jimmy Graham signing. I'm still I'm still so confused why that happened. I've yet to see anyone give me a reason why that happened. Holy cow, JGFC's taking Daenerys Prince at 15-6. JGFC, I know he's tearing up training camp. You don't have to take him at 174. I'm taking Raheem Mostert. That's what I'm doing. I'm taking Raheem Mostert. I can't get all hot and bothered about these Dolphins running backs and not take them. You guys are wilding out this morning. Baker Mayfield at 132. Daenerys Prince at 174. What's going on out here, guys? What's going on? JGFC, get in the chat. Tell me, because it's JGFC balances his range so much with like 
purposefully aggressive picks and, and structures that I generic I, generically, I genuinely do not know if that Prince click was intentional or a Davis Matic Q mistake. Reveal yourself in the chat right now, JGFC, generic Prince. I, I need JGFC's PR team to spin up a response to this selection. We are waiting. The nation awaits. He's a riser, baby. We're all trying to find the guy who did it. He's not a riser until someone takes him at that spot. No one was taking Daneric Prince until the 17th round of this draft at earliest. At the earliest. I stand by that. JGFC. JGFC takes him in the in the 14th round and goes, he's a riser. Yeah, no shit. Because you're taking him there. <laughs> you get the spin zone. The PR teams out here today are incredible. Mm. All right, what do we want to do here? Quarterback stuff is getting a little dicey. I think we could do one more running back here. I do like Chubba. We already kind of have that Carolina thing going. It's a bummer that uh, Bryce Young was gone, but I'm going to take Chuba and be done at running back here. So we have two more picks. I am going to be weak at, at quarterback. It's definitely how we're trending here. Definitely how we're trending. I probably should have built out another backdoor stack. Was this the time that I should have just taken Robert Woods and CJ Stroud? I don't know. I don't know. Mm. Now I'm going to have the tough, I'm probably going to end up with like a very, uh, actually, I think we could get to three QBs here. I think we could get to three. Mm. Derek says, solo Derek card. Am I done drafting? Do I only have two picks left? Or do I have zero picks left? Through 17, uh, through 16 rounds, we have Derek Carr as our only quarterback. We're gonna, you've seen a lot of these guys push the solo Josh Allen build. We're gonna push the first solo Derek Carr build. Uh, Derek Carr, Austin Eckler, Ramondre Stevenson, AJ Dillon, Zach Charbonnet, Raheem Mostert, Chuba Hubbard, wide receivers, Chris Olave, Jerry Judy, DJ Moore, uh, Quentin Johnston, Rashad Bateman, Jonathan Mingo, Rashid Shahid, tight end, Kyle Pitts, and Greg Dolchich. Can we get Jim Irsay on the randomizer? That would be fun. I would be down for that. All right, let's take Ritter. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Two quarterbacks with the same bye week. That's a no-no. That's a no-no. Speaking of which, um, so we got the best ball data bowl. That is the submissions are due today. Uh, a lot of submissions have come in over the past few days and at the intermission between this draft 106 and 107, I'm going to bring on Tim Bryan, who had a very cool uh, submission to the contest. But the reason I thought of this is because Lou Dog, our very own Lou Dog, his submission was do buy weeks matter. And Lou was digging through the data, looking at the diminishing returns of having multiple players, both uh, across the whole team and by position and what it did to your advance rate. So you guys got to keep an eye out for the Lou Dog submission there. And we're going to have more updates on announcing the finalists for the Best Ball Data Bowl. And then next week, we are going to huddle. We'll do a show. Some of the finalists will get to present their Best Ball Data findings. And then we will announce the winner of the inaugural Best Ball Data Bowl. Um, you guys have gotten to see a lot of the sneak peeks of the submissions on Best Ball Breakfast over the course of the summer. Uh, was it last week? Sac religious came on. Uh, that was a very good time. So we will bring on Tim here in a second. When we finish this draft, ye of little faith didn't holy shit. Mac Jones has a week 11 by two. I'm sorry. This is where I draw a lot. We're, we're taking three week 11 buys. How, how, 
How do you take three quarterbacks and they all have the same bye week? Lou, can you crunch the numbers on this? Seriously? Seriously, this all started with the Russell Wilson snipe. This all happened because of you, Sam, because you wanted to set up a backdoor Marvin Mim stack. All of this is your fault. My PR team, I need my PR team right now to address the three quarterbacks with the same buy. One sec, got to huddle with my PR team. This thing on. Um, yeah, we're here on uh, on behalf of Peter Overzet to um, to make a statement about what happened earlier on Best Ball Breakfast. Now, while the data is overwhelmingly clear, it is suboptimal to have two quarterbacks with the same bye week. We just have too little data to know if having three quarterbacks with the same bye week is as detrimental as two. And so at this point, we reject the current science and the current studies because we truly just do not know. And in a contest of this size, what if Derek Carr, Desmond Ritter, and Mac Jones is the trio you need? We rest our case. That's why you guys hire a good PR team. All right? That's why you guys hire it. All right, this team... <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go recap this team, and then we're going to bring Tim on. Then we're going to bring Tim on for a palate cleanser here. Draft 106. Draft 106. Unbelievable. Unbelievable how that all ran out. Best ball breakfast, 3672. If you have three quarterbacks, you don't have any. Is that how the saying goes? New Orleans, Atlanta, New England. All right, this final team in the books. Three quarterbacks who all will be resting in week 11. Derek Carr, Desmond Ritter, and Mac Jones. Running backs, Austin Eckler, Ramondre Stevenson, A.J. Dillon, Zach Charbonnet, Raheem Mostert, and Chuba Hubbard. Wide receiver, Chris Olave, Jerry Judy, DJ Moore, Quentin Johnson, Rashad Bateman, Jonathan Mingo, and Rashid Shahid. Tight end, Kyle Pitts, and Greg Dolchich. This is honestly a nice team. If it weren't for this. Other than that, how is the play Mrs. Lincoln? That's how I feel about this team. That's how I feel about it. If you guys are new to the channel, we have over 500 people watching right now. If you guys would like to see more great analysis and spin zoning on why taking three quarterbacks with the same bye week is viable, subscribe to the channel. All right. At this point, we are bringing on our best ball dateable guest. It's none other than Tim Bryan. Tim, welcome to the show. Hey, Peter. How you doing? Thanks for having me on. Yeah, you know what? I I, I was doing better. Uh, I thought I thought I had just orchestrated the perfect team. I was going to slide Mac Jones in there as my third quarterback. Uh, then got hit with the triple eleven buy. But I'm I'm ready. I'm ready to move on. And I want to move on by talking about your best ball dateable submission that came in over the course of the weekend. Set the table for us, though. Let people know uh, kind of your background. Is this your first time diving into, you know, fantasy analytics? How did you get your start? Yeah, um, I would say I'm, a, I'm more of a, a data first guy and then, and then a fantasy guy. So, um, I mean, I do some sports analytics and stuff, but this best ball dateable was actually my introduction to best ball in general. So. Um, it, it was a great way to learn about the about the game and and uh, maybe get a look at the, how the market works. Yeah. So, are you saying you before this summer you hadn't drafted too many teams yourself? Well, I mean, I've done regular fantasy, but never best ball. This was my first time doing best ball. Yeah. Awesome. And, and, and so what, since the data bowl, I've I've made like four or five entries. So there you go. And so, set the table for people. I'm going to pull up your uh, submission here, but tell people what was the project you tackled and and what was the methodology you applied to do so? Yeah, I think the uh, the benefit of the of the data we were provided for the data bowl was the so the data is um, like draft entries into best ball. So I tried to challenge myself and not add any like player specific um, player specific data. It's all like mm -hmm. market based data if that makes sense. So um, I summarized the data into rows where 
uh, it's, it's all market delta per position um, per entry. So what, what I mean by that is a certain entry may be reaches on quarterbacks or relative to ADP, or maybe they're in RB0, so they're, they're letting RBs drop, drop back farther than ADP. So I use that to um, run simulations. So you can enter in, if you want to test RB0 strategy, you can run that against uh, a simulation of these market dynamics um, different datable strategies, if that makes sense. Yeah. Awesome. And what is the, what is the name of your submission? I'm, I got the GitHub pulled up here. I want to pull yeah, it Yeah. It's um, simulating best ball mania drafts using realistic market dynamics. Okay. Let's see here. Oh, here we go. Yeah, there it is. Um, awesome. So I'm going to kind of scroll through here, but tell people kind of uh, what you ended up finding here through this research. Yeah, so I didn't. I guess my submission is more of a of a tool than it is an analysis. I do have some analysis at the end on the RB zero strategy, and so I simulate the RB zero strategy in one through twelve in each draft spot, and simulate it like twenty times per draft slot per draft slot against realistic market dynamics, and um, just see you know where it's best to do RB zero and if it's if it's actually a good strategy. So, so, so hit me with it. You can, you can be, you can uh, well, I mean, I only ran it against 2021, uh, or sorry, 2022, and it seems to perform better in the higher draft slots, but that may be because of, uh, Jonathan Taylor was, you know, number one ish last year and he didn't perform so well. So, um, I would like to test it against, you know, maybe many more years of, of data, but, but I think it's a good strategy. How do you think about that just from an overall data perspective, just the mm -hmm. age old um, dilemma of like the sample sizes are still small, like even looking at, you know, Leone's best ball manifesto that, you know, looked at just last year's data where, how, where do you think there's actionable stuff to pull away from versus stuff just being descriptive relative to one year? Yeah, I guess, uh, I don't know. I think the benefit of this datable was the, I mean, there was like millions and millions of rows of data. And I think with any market, whether it's the stock market or, or a best ball market, there's inherently wisdom embedded in the market. So that's kind of what I tried to pull away from here. Um, and, you know, you can use the market to test these strategies and, and, you know, run simulations against actual entries into best ball. Yeah. So the, I'd say the most controversial thing about your submission is you calling zero RB RB zero. Are you are you trying uh, to rebrand this strategy uh, and put your stamp on it? What's going on with this RB zero shit? No, like I said, I'm uh, I'm fairly new to the best ball game, so <laughs> maybe I'm not educated, but uh, uh, definitely from now on, I'll be calling it zero RB or wh what is it? What's the right one? Zero RB. Yeah. Zero yeah, RB. Just, okay. It's a it's it's all good. It's all good here. So you're you know one of the conclusions you you bold here. The simulation tool is an excellent way to test different draft strategies in a realistic environment. So what how how easy would this be to use for other people if they wanted to test hyper fragile like three mm -hmm. running backs through five rounds? Is it customizable that people could essentially access this and and run stuff for for other structures? Um, maybe not right now. I think maybe in the future, I'd like to, you know, develop like an app or something that people could use in the browser. Um, but right now it's kind of, it's kind of flat. So if you set your market Delta on RBs to, um, negative five, for example, which means you would be letting the RBs drop an average of five positions relative to ADP. It doesn't mm. change over the course of, of the, uh, of the draft. So, you know, it'll keep letting the RBs drop, 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 drop. Whereas I think like true zero RB, you might grab an RB uh, at, at a certain point, but this simulation on average will just grab them in, in the last, like the very last round to fill out the roster completely. So I, I'd like you, to, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, because there's always uh, varying definitions of what constitutes a zero RB roster for this purpose, how did you define zero RB? I believe I set it to letting RBs drop five slots relative to their ADP. So so the simulation, it'll pick up the lowest AD, adjusted ADP player. And in this case, the only one I've adjusted for the strategy we're testing is to um, reduce the uh, ADP of RBs by five. So. so it doesn't have to do with like, so when you say zero RB from like position mm -hmm. four, so when I think most people, when they hear it, they normally work under the assumption like, okay, you didn't take a running back through five rounds. Is that, is that uh, layered into this at all? No, not exactly. Yeah, it just it just 
devalues the running back position relative to the other ones. Gotcha. So it's actually more when you say zero RB in this one, it's more about um, like the ADP dynamics of each specific exactly. running back than than the overall structure of your team. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think in the future, maybe some future development would be make it more dynamic, like what you're saying, like wait until round five to draft an RB ra rather than, you know, just devalue mm -hmm. them relative to ADP. You know what? Now that I understand that the way you're defining it is actually different, I think you can keep the RB zero. I think you can keep okay. it because it is denoting a different thing. Um, it's more in an individual pick selection, how that exactly. is being valued than throughout the whole start. So you're good. I think you keep RB zero. All right. I, I came up with a whole new thing, I guess. You did. You did. <laughs> uh, so what, uh, in, what did you say that your background was in, in coding? Are you kind of uh, taught self-taught yourself or how, what kind of tools and stuff did you use to, to get up to this point where you could do this? Yeah, uh, I guess I'm self-taught. I took a, a data science boot camp last year. Um, and most of my projects are related to sports. Like um, I have a library on GitHub to scrape ESPN fantasy football data for your like private league. If you wanted to make charts to show how much better you are than your teammate or your opponents, for example. But, but yeah, uh, I use Python mostly. Um, I'm not a big fan of R, but I'm trying to get better with it. Awesome. Well, uh, very much appreciate you, uh, competing here in the best ball data We have lots of submissions to get through here in the next few days. We'll be making announcements soon. We are doing this in conjunction with our friends over at fantasy data pros. If you guys want to learn the skills to be able to do projects like this here, you can get that course 25% off with promo code Pete Lou dog took the course here uh, for the first time this summer and was able to use what he learned to submit a, a very solid submission to the contest. So you can really get caught up to speed very quickly. You guys can also check out uh, the full submission here from Tim at the Best Ball Data Bowl. You can go to fantasy pros, fantasydatapros.com and then click the Best Ball tab. And then you can hop into that GitHub repository and you can review all of these submissions. Tim, anywhere else people should uh, be following you? I know you're on Twitter. Anything else you'd like them to check out? Yeah, I'm on Twitter. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter, you can, I make some YouTube videos on uh, sports analytics coding. So you can find my YouTube on my Twitter. Uh, awesome. Tim Bryan, 000. Awesome. I'll link to those in the show notes here so you guys can check out Tim. Best of luck in the Datable contest and with your future uh, drafts here. Always nice. It's funny because I feel like a lot of people are probably obsessed with best ball and then want to dive into some of these you know, data sets and stuff like that. But you coming about it, from the other direction of, you know, just wanting to play with data sets and then being your introduction to best ball is a, is a cool angle. Yeah, definitely. Uh, thanks for well, having me on. Right. Good luck with those uh, three QBs in week 11. Yeah. <laughs> please don't remind me. Please don't remind me. Uh, all right, Tim, we will catch you next time here. Uh, like I said, we'll be having a, another show. Uh, I believe it's going to be tentatively scheduled for next Monday where we will be um, announcing the finalists. And then shortly after we will be crowning, the first ever best ball data bowl champ, or as Adam Levitan would call them, king of the virgins here. Um, I think we need to do some housekeeping. We need a reset. We need a palate cleanser. No more three quarterback buys, all of this stuff as we get ready for our next draft. I think first off here, uh, we need to we need to pour some more coffee, I think is, is really the first thing that we need to do here. And then we are going to hop in another draft. This will be draft number 107 here. Let's get some coffee. All right, here we go. We got the coffee. Now it's time to feed the ducks. Where are my ducks at? Where are all my ducks at? All right, there's our ducks. We have entered the draft. I tipped people off in the Discord. Looks like we got a few friends. I have the 106 again. I can I can just not buy a top five slot these days. I really cannot buy a top five slot. It's, it's very it's very frustrating. Hmm. Actually, I don't know if I've. Uh, updated my exposures lately so with the brick draft caddy you can just go into your exposure page and then once you're on this page you hit grab exposures 
And now these will be updated, so we will head back. All right, let's get in here. Let's refresh, 106, new draft, clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose. We got Casey at the 1-2. We got Derek at 1-7. TTP at 11. Brendan at 12. Battling with the badges on a Monday morning. Wouldn't want it any other way. Speaking of the Brick Draft Caddy, if you guys want this overlay for your underdog drafts, you can also use it on DraftKings, Drafters, multiple other spots. The Auto Drafter even works on DraftKings, I'm, I'm told. Uh, you can go to thedraftcaddy.com. I literally get questions on this on every single video. I, so I will keep saying it, thedraftcaddy.com. You can get this overlay for all of your drafts. We are in the exact same spot that we have been a bunch, and I'm starting to feel bored um, still don't really want to take Kelsey. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take Diggs here. I'm at 5.7%. I'm fine being slightly underweight Diggs, but I just, I'm truly, I'm truly bored of some of these middle slots right now. I, I just, I just want to be able to select Jamar Chase so bad. Can I just have Jamar Chase? I'll settle for Tyree Kill. I just can't keep living in this 1-7 to 1-9 purgatory. All right, feed the likes. It's been tough, man. Uh, when I registered, there were three spots left. I do, there's there's a ping alert in the Discord, but the ping alerts are almost useless in that people just wait to see when I'm typing. So that's the new ping alert if you're in there. I try to do my best, but the people are frothy to get in these drafts on a... On a Monday morning. <sighs> Influencer 106 again for the backward hat bros. As a reminder, later this afternoon, I believe I'm going to post it around 2.30 p.m. Eastern, new video up on the Deposit Kingdom YouTube channel about how to battle a wide receiver avalanche. See what Derek does here. Derek takes Devonta Smith. Um, am I supposed to boost my Barkley? I'd rather have more Pollard and keep my underweight on Barkley. Let's grab some Pollard. Diggs Pollard seems fun. And I wanted to let Spurry have his Week 17 Cooper Cup Barkley correlation. Is, is Cup Barkley the most frequented week 11 or week 17 correlation in, in rounds one or two, I guess Lamb Amon Ra. So we, we got the hits here, right? Is there another correlation week 17 mini where you have a uh, two players from opposite teams that is more frequented? I don't know if I can think of any Chubb Wilson. For some reason, I feel like I don't, I don't see that as much. Yeah, week 11. I got weekly winners on my mind. Been trying to take down week 11 in that tournament. <laughs> Devontae JT. Mm. Ramondre goes here at 25. What did I take him at? Did I take him at pick 34 in my last draft? So we start Diggs and Pollard. Yeah, Devontae JT, I guess that's just another one anecdotally that didn't register as much for me. Partly because Devontae JT requires you, it basically has to be at the turn and you're reaching for both of those guys based on ADP. I don't think it's as frequent as those other ones because no one likes taking two second round picks. I've seen, so Calvin Ridley falling here. Uh, I've seen people chasing Calvin Ridley up boards. I've seen screenshots of him in the uh, the late second already. We'll see what Spurry does here. I think I pretty much just have to take Josh Allen, though, if he falls. 
I really do think the ways that the digs at that price really works out is with Allen. Let's see if Spurry auto drafts Josh Allen. No, he takes Calvin Ridley. So yeah, we'll stack up uh, Allen at these prices. It is one of the it is one of the benefits of taking digs in these rooms with sharper drafters is they're more willing to let Josh Allen fall unstacked. So you can get third round Josh Allen with another player mixed in. I'm pretty sure I have this start with um, with a Waddle mixed in as well. But Josh Allen, Tony Pollard, Stefan Diggs to start here. Now this, now this is the correlation we need. Olave and Laird. Hmm. Patrick Laird, I put I put the tweet on the timeline. Someone put a a video up of the Tampa Bay running backs doing some uh, you know agility drills. I'm just telling you objectively, just completely full objective. It's not not coming from a guy who has a Patrick Laird signed jersey over his right shoulder. Objectively, Patrick Laird was the quickest in that drill, quicker than Rashad White, than Sean Tucker, than Keyshawn Vaughn. It's just it's objective facts. Patrick Laird has the most demonstrable agility of that cohort. He was also third, too. He was third. It was Rashad White, then Keyshawn, then our Laird and Savior. We're about to pick here in the fourth round. Watson and ETN both on the board look like good picks to me. Let's see. Watson goes... Do you want some more Drake London here? Do you want some McLaurin? I have. Let's do let's do some more Drake. We'll do Drake London here. I'm gonna try to stay on track. It, it was tempting to pat. It, I was tempted by ETN there for for a second, but after doing Pollard, after doing Allen, I want to. Uh, I don't want to fall too far behind here at wide receiver. We will never do a one quarterback build. We will do uh, three quarterbacks with the same bye week before we do a one quarterback Josh Allen build. Hmm. Wow, Nicholas, not only liking my team, but calling me a young man. I appreciate that, Nicholas. Mm. Brandon Ayuk catching a little steam. You want to talk about a, a drum beat at training camp? I mean, Brandon Ayuk. You would not know that that team has any other players other than Brandon Ayuk based on how the beats are covering it. Debo Samuel's out here sending shirtless photos to Kyle Shanahan. Who knows what CMC's doing? And Brandon Ayuk just absolutely torching 49ers training camp. About to pick at 5-6 here. Man, this is, a, this is a pretty gross range for wide receiver. This is normally where I just say, hmm, guess I should just take Jackson Smith and Jigba for the 19th time. Godwin goes, so you're looking at Deontay Johnson. I packed my Deontay bags at the cheaper price. Don't love him there. Marquise Brown, nothing with Philadelphia. Aw, shucks. Guess I'll click JSN. Aw, shucks. Guess I'll take JSN again. It's just, I, I think I have like a Marie Kondo approach to JSN. If you're in the middle of the fifth round and no other selections bring you joy select JSN. It's Marie Kondo School of Drafting. No other picks brought me joy. None. So I'm just going to get a little bit of joy in my life. Is that okay with you guys? Am I allowed to experience a little bit of joy for once in my life? Thank you, Tim, for coming on. Tim, of course, getting the usual first-time streamer question gauntlet people asking about a ceiling i don't even I, I wasn't even paying to the attention to the chat when we were talking tim so i don't know what was up with your ceiling but i'm glad you are addressing it today has been a big day for pr spins everyone's having to come out and address things baker mayfield three week 11 by quarterback ceiling issues everyone's having to 
to defend themselves on this Monday morning. There we go. Tom with the punch up. Joyson. Jackson Smith in Jigba. Joyson. He brings me so much joy. Hmm. All right, so our team here through five rounds, Josh Allen at quarterback, Tony Pollard, and then we got three wide receivers, Stefan Diggs, Drake London, and JSN. Hmm. So one of the one of the tactics that I wrote about, uh, or that I wrote about, that I talk about in the video that's dropping later today about how to combat the wide receiver avalanche is doing the true zero RB builds with the 2772, where you get the elite quarterback and the elite tight end. Um, obviously, I don't have a true zero RB build going here. I think I just have to take Gabe with this bet. Um, I was really tempted by both Pitts and Dobbins there, um, but I think it would be a little silly not to get my big Josh Allen stack there with Gabe Davis around ADP in this room. So we'll see if something comes back. J.K. Got Dobbins does not. That was a tough spot. I was torn there. ETN at pick 56 in the underflow draft. Goodness. Sam says, feels good to cement my place in the deposit kingdom. The dipshit who took Baker 100 picks ahead of ADP. Great day to be great. Hey, Sam, this is what I'll tell you. There's lots of redemption arcs in the deposit kingdom. I'll give you one right now. b -Spurf. You guys remember b -Spurf. He once sniped me. I was setting up like a Trevor Lawrence like backdoor stack, and he took Zay Jones as a one-off, and I lost my goddamn mind. I said I was going to ban him from everything. What did he do? He became a YouTube member, and then he joined us as one of the heroes that completed the world's fastest slow draft. That was the redemption arc. That is what is possible within the deposit kingdom. So I know you're down on your luck right now, Sam. You feel like you're taking it from all angles, that you're a punching bag, that you burned a team on an early Baker Mayfield selection. I get it, but I just want you to know redemption is possible. You are at the beginning of the hero's journey. Um, let's see here. So I talked, uh, when I was talking with Pat and Sean, you know, one thing that I was saying is like very hard to do is because I like Penny and Charbonnet so much, I've been having a hard time actually getting the exposure I would ideally like to Kenneth Walker and DeAndre Swift. So, uh, I'm going to try to, that's another like tweak I'm trying to make. So I'm not passing on DeAndre Swift in that spot there. I think with Allen too, because I have some other backdoor stacking options, I don't get quite as worried about being super behind at wide receiver. And Swift is just a guy I want more of. Um, I have very heavy Rashad Penny bags right now, 19%, and I'm lighter on Swift. I'm slightly above market, 9.5% a little bit after that selection. Um, but yeah, getting more Swift is definitely an objective for me in the month of August with these last 40 some drafts. It's true. Jared says you play chess with Liam one time and now the bill stacks are flowing. Check out last week's randomizer draft with Liam, a wild time. He hopped in the hot tub. He made a case for Dalton Kincaid with socks stuffed in his mouth. We played chess, we played checkers. We suplexed his desk chair. It was, it was a great time. Mac Nova says, are we sure it wasn't just the world's fastest draft? It, it might have been, but, you know, I, to get it accepted by the Guinness World Book of Records, I wanted to, I wanted to emphasize the level of risk there because the risk when you do a slow draft is the draft could legitimately take weeks if not everyone buys in. And so doing the world's fastest fast draft, it's like, tightrope walking with a huge safety net underneath. We did it with no safety net. We free soloed the world's fastest draft. Am I just going to keep selecting Bateman? I, I will just keep selecting Bateman if that's the trade-off. And, and that's what's actually kind of nice about the Swift pick. Before 
before like Bateman and even Flowers a little bit were chilling more after pick like 84, because it used to be in the Avalanche rooms at the end of the seventh round after pick 84, like Flowers and Bateman and all of those guys were gone. Now, for whatever reason, and I, I truly don't know why Bateman is falling. There was a little bit of the stuff uh, initially with him opening on Pup, and then he was back off of it. But I was often doing the 2v2s where I would take Bateman in the seventh, and then it would be like, eh, I, am I just reaching for James Cook? Am I taking Javante Williams again? Or whatever. Now, you can almost flip it to where you take that running back that I wasn't getting a ton of access to, the DeAndre Swifts or even the David Montgomery types, then knowing that a guy like Bateman, who for me is still part of that wide receiver tier before it falls off the cliff. So it's nice to be able to have him as a backstop and then make that second detour for Swift, which otherwise I feel like you would get punished. And then you would be having to reach in this kind of no man's land of wide receivers. So I, uh, with Bateman here at a 93 ADP, I mean, he's almost a must click for me in that range. And also just helps me balance out some of my really heavy bags on some of those other running backs that I was selecting a ton in that range. James Cook, 19%. This is a is a take that is not going to age well. Beckham over Bateman. Blech. Jared says the randomizer with Liam was an all-time stream. Tom's got 25% Bateman. Love to hear it. Has anyone from UD confirmed the record? I, I I believe they're getting a huge kind of plaque made. I heard something about a statue. I said, guys, don't don't worry about the statue. I'm like, it, it's yes, it's a world record. It's it's impressive, but like, don't bother with the statue. But I do think, I do think they are getting a, a plaque made. All right, our team through uh, eight rounds here. Josh Allen at quarterback, running back, Tony Pollard and DeAndre Swift, wide receivers, Stefan Diggs, Drake London, JSN, Gabe Davis, and Rashad Bateman. No wide receivers to be found in this queue right now. We have another falling to us situation here. Evan Ingram falling a bit relative to his ADP. Evan Ingram does go. Antonio Gibson, all of these running backs, I select a good bit here. I don't think any of these quarterbacks uh, are necessary. None of these wide receivers. It's probably, I think Gibson is the pick here. We'll add Gibson. We now have uh, three running backs with tantalizing upside, explosive pass catchers, prone to injury Tony Pollard DeAndre Swift Antonio Gibson mm. all right Tyler still pounding the table for more likes we have over 500 people watching here how many likes do we have I have to open it up in a separate tab because it doesn't show me within here I'm gonna look at how many likes we have how many likes I'm pulling it up only 182 likes. That's pitiful. That's sad. You guys should be ashamed of yourselves. We set a world record on this stream, and you guys can't even get your nimble little fingers out to fondle the like button. So Sharbs is definitely not the pick in the ninth round. He continues to fall. If you watch the draft right before this, we got him at pick 116. Um, I am not out on Zach Charbonnet, but when you have a guy who's falling, you don't take him at ADP because better prices are coming. So I am going to be pushing my Sharb selections past ADP. This time he goes at 110, but when he's continually falling past ADP, I don't feel the need to grab him there. Let's see here. We could go with, we got a few quarterbacks on the board. P. Ryan, the other guy who's falling a ton. I kind of, kind of like the idea of going Geno and Josh Allen together here. I think normally my instinct is to push QB2 on Allen teams more, but Geno at ADP, 
obviously making a huge stand on JSN this year. So we'll get a Josh Allen, Geno Smith team. Derek said he removed his like after you picked three QBs with the same buy. You want fish like me in your draft. You should be liking it from burner accounts saying like, let's keep encouraging this streamer. This this idiot streamer thinks it, it's okay to take three quarterbacks with the same bye week. Yeah, let me hit the like button an extra time. Let's make him think he's on to something. Mm. Here we go. Marlo says he just checked with Guinness and three QBs with the same buy is also a world record. On it, okay, let's do it. Let's do a poll. How many times do you think that's happened in Best Ball Mania? Were how many drafts deep? How many entries deep? Like 300,000 some? How many times do you think another roster has taken three quarterbacks with the same bye week? I want to know what kind of elite company I am in. Single digits? Double digits? Triple digits? I, I think it has to be double digits or less. Yeah. I think sub 50 sounds right. Mo people are people are terrified, as Tyler says here, of of two quarterbacks with the same bye week. You gotta be a real perverted fuck to do what I just did. Sorry to the kids. Apologies to the kids. Am I gonna take Dalton Kincaid? Am I gonna take Dalton Kincaid? Might as well, right? Might as well. This one goes out to Liam. This one goes out to Liam. I took Dalton Kincaid. Here you go. Go Bills. Jump through a folding table. Uh, crush fireball. Um, Josh Allen, Geno Smith at quarterback. Running back, Tony Pollard, DeAndre Swift, Antonio Gibson. Wide receiver, Stefan Diggs, Drake London, JSN, Gabe Davis, Rashad Bateman. Tight end, Dalton Kincaid. I did it. I did it for the culture. How much Kincaid am I, what did I have before this? How much Kincaid did I have? 1.9%. There you go. <laughs> Where do I get my ideas? I get my ideas from Liam. The sun runner himself. Poor Sam is still really grappling through this Baker Mayfield misclick. Jokes aside, I'm legitimately too traumatized to start anything in this overflow draft now. Hey, send your complaints to Davis Maddock at Davis Maddock on Twitter. Give him a testimonial. Your star method ruined my morning. I once took Rogers, Young, and Tannehill, completely chaotic draft that didn't end well. Do those guys all have the same buy? What is Bryce Young? Bryce Young is seven. Tannehill seven. Okay, Rogers week seven buy. Whew. So you were one. You were one of the sub 50 along with myself who aren't afraid to stare down the barrel of the bye week bros. All right, what are we going to do at this selection? We are on the clock here. Tank's really starting to move up, isn't he? Tank is starting to move up a good bit. I'm going to put Tank in the queue. Chiggs, Schultz. Hmm. What what what's the uh wasn't Tig's ADP like 155 like two weeks ago? What happened with Tig? I select Tig. I'm trusting the market. If the market says he's he should be going at 139, who am I to argue with the market? Vaporware said I did it with Pat? I thought we just had two. I thought we just had two of them. Wasn't it a Stafford? A Stafford and Hertz team? I've definitely, I, trust me, I've taken two quarterbacks with the same buy before. I'm talking about three, though. I, 
Ah, uh, Phil with the boots on the ground here. If coach is talking up Tank as a as a pass catcher. There we go. There we go. All right, so our team here, we got Josh Allen and Geno Smith at quarterback. We got Tony Pollard, DeAndre Swift, Antonio Gibson, Tank, the pass catcher, Bigsby. Wide receiver, Stefan Diggs, Drake London, JSN, Gabe Davis, Rashad Bateman, and tight end, Dalton Kincaid. People were eyeing Casey's draft earlier. Joe Burrow at 47. Are we starting to get some crazy Joe Burrow slides? Obviously, this isn't a crazy slide, but I did people chill out on that or are people still panicked about the calf strain stuff? Kendra Miller goes at 148. Let's see what Spurry does here. I believe I will take. Ooh, this is the spin zone I need. Carr gets traded to Denver week nine. <laughs> Sean Payton trading for Derek Carr. Um, I'm going to select Gerald Everett. We'll play. Um, we got Everett plays uh, Buffalo in week uh, 16. And then Denver in week 17. We'll also need to think uh, about a little New England bring back. Although Liam told me, Liam told me we can just onslaught the Bills, that we don't need to bring it back with Patriots because they're going to beat the Patriots, I think he said 40 to 7. And I honestly don't want to be in the business of arguing with Liam's crystal ball. See, there you go. Mr. Mister says Burrow went 65th in the overflow. All right, look at all these triple bye week bros coming out of the woodwork. I appreciate you guys. I think I have three QB week 13 buys, Alan Lamar and Fields. Wait, you took all those guys on the same team? Or you're saying those were, I'm confused. Did you take Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, and Fields on the same team? That seems aggressive. We're, it, you know what's crazy too is like uh, we're we're not getting a Marvin Mims discount and, and you're still talking to someone who has very heavy Marvin Mims bags, but I do think he should be dropping relative to these injuries. It's now a different hamstring injury than the one he was dealing with in the spring. I'm certainly pumping the brakes on my my Marvin Mims exposure here which just absolutely pains me to say, like truly pains me. Um, Back on the clock here, we could do another draft with Rashid Shahid. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I want to set up here. Could also do spears. You know what? This this tier of wide receivers is so flat. Let's grab spears. And we'll see what comes back. I like spears in this range with all these other guys. Singletary, uh, Roshan, Foreman, Ford, Gainwell, Mostert. So then my running backs now are Pollard, Swift, Gibson, Tank, and Spears. I think I can rock a five running back build there if I need or I can tack on another if I like a piece. So I have a 2552 build through 14 rounds. Josh Allen and Geno Smith at quarterback, running backs, Pollard Swift, Gibson, Tank, and Tajay. Wide receiver still at five. Uh oh. Uh, Stefan Diggs, Drake London, JSN, Gabe Davis, and Rashad Bateman. I'm so confused. Chat saying you did the three QB thing in a Dalmatian with Pat. Oh, was this over on ship chasing? Okay. Okay. All right. It's all starting to come back to me. It's all starting to come back to me. Hmm. 
We got Casey starting to crank it purple. Dalton Schultz, Irv Smith, Taysom Hill. So my schedule for the rest of the week, as always, like I said, uh, we got ADP chasing immediately following this show. Over at noon, they're going to have JJ, the late round QB on. Don't miss that. Later this afternoon, I'm going to post my wide receiver avalanche video. Pat is going to be streaming his pros versus Joe's draft on ship chasing tonight. Um, I want to get my preferred New England bring back here. So we will grab uh, Taekwon Thornton as my sixth wide receiver. It's been a while since I've taken Thornton, I feel like. Him and Mims were like my two favorite deep wide receiver clicks for a long time. Then they always got steamed up my draft boards. I'm trying to think through like how much of a Bills onslaught do I want to do here too. You know, you're going to have Knox, Shakir, Hardy all kicking around. I already have Allen with Diggs, Gabe, and Kincaid. I think I could probably, I could probably tack on a fourth cheap. What about the Taekwon FUD? I haven't even seen the Taekwon FUD. All I see is Pat Thorman who is my resident New England homer boots on the ground, uh, who's all aboard the Taekwon Thornton train. But I'm debating this, this Knox, Shakir. I don't think I would do, because this could also feel like a three tight end build. I could also play it with another New England tight end and play that game a little bit bigger. I don't have any... Yeah, I got the Chargers in week 16 with New England, or sorry, with the Bills. Two, five, six, two build with three picks left. Let's see. There was Liam was peppering the a bills beat reporter for alpha on the khalil shakur deonti hardy trent sherfield battle there was some interesting uh interesting conversation with that i think i am going to play this as a three tight end build and grab gasicki assuming derek doesn't I'm trying to think what other wide receivers would make sense for my team in this range we're going to take Gesicki. So we'll be done at quarterback and tight end. Probably going to do just two more wide receivers here. I think we're going to be good at five running backs. Pollard, Swift, Gibson, Tank, Spears. I think that's fine for an anchor Pollard build. And I think I got a couple wide receivers I'll like to land the plane here. Hmm. Josh says, Tyquad had two TDs yesterday. The Parker bros are just victory lapping his four catches for 20 yards. We love the Parker bros. We need more Parker bros. Without the Parker bros, we don't get Tyquan Thornton at 174. <laughs> Without the Parker bros, Tyquan Thornton is going where he was uh, before uh, Parker's little contract got the Parker bros all excited about him and he was going in like the 130s. So we love and we appreciate the Parker bros. We need more Parker bros. All right. Two more picks here. I think I'm going double wide receiver. Let's see. Are there any correlation stuff? We can do, so we got um, Baltimore with Miami, uh, JSN with Pittsburgh, Drake London with Chicago, do a little Mac Hollins, told us not to use it, utensils. Hmm. Let's see here. Jalen Hyatt uh, has been having a good camp here. You know what I am going to do? 
I'm just going to get my bill guy first here. So this was the guy that when Liam was having his uh, his combo with the uh, the beat reporter, he was saying Hardy had the inside track, even over Shakir and Shurfield, to be on the field in three wide receiver sets. Certainly interesting. Um, but this is one of those spots where I kind of want to, because I do take Shakir a decent amount. And I don't have a ton of Hardy, 1.9%. What do I have at Shakir? 6.7%. This is one of those classic spots. And it's taken me multiple years to realize that lesson of when you just autopilot select the guy you think is next on the depth chart, even though the probabilities of whoever is actually going to be the wide receiver three is actually pretty spread out. Um, trying to get better about this. I use it I use it as the, uh, what did we call it? The Olamide Zacchaeus corollary, where he was the default selection in Matt Ryan stacks, and it actually ended up being the Cordero Patterson year. So we're going to start balancing our range a little bit with Hardy there. I know Pat was on Hardy early in the offseason as well. Pete, do you have a favorite BBM4 team and can you show us? Well, uh, funny you say that because in the wide receiver avalanche video, um, I highlight three of my favorite teams I've drafted, looking at the different tactics to battle wide receiver avalanches. So you can see those three teams in that video that's going to be dropping later today. I have pinned here. If you guys aren't subscribed to the Deposit Kingdom YouTube channel, get subscribed over there. It's for all of my more long form pre-produced uh, videos. They're not live streams. Spend a lot of time working on those so make sure you guys check that out i think i'm gonna post it at like 2 30 right when uh when adp chasing ends i'm gonna post it all right let's uh let's let the chat the chat crowdsource a final wide receiver pick all right start to get your votes in start to get your votes in now you could do chase claypool opposite of uh Drake London, which I like. I Wandell Robinson, I select in every other draft. You could do a gross Josh Palmer as a as another Chargers thing. You could do Mac Hollins. Um, let's see here. Claypool, Hollins. I'm ignoring the Corey Davis stuff. Claypool, Claypool. Looks like Claypool wins this one. All right, there you go. Chase Claypool, come on down. Barrios for Bateman. I'm wor I'm worried about Barrios. He got cheated on by his TikTok influencer girlfriend, Alex Earl. Don't ask me how I know this stuff, but I'm worried that Braxton just isn't in the mental headspace to have a really good season right now. All right, this team, we did it. 2583, we did it for Liam. This is what happens when I hung out with Liam for two streams last Thursday. I draft a Bills Onslaught. Josh Allen and Geno Smith at quarterback, running back Tony Pollard, DeAndre Swift, Antonio Gibson, Tank Bigsby, and Tajay Spears. Wide receiver, Stefan Diggs, Drake London, JSN, Gabe Davis, Rashad Bateman, Tyquan Thornton, Deontay Hardy, and Chase Claypool. Tight ends, Dalton Kincaid, Gerald Everett, and Mike Gesicki. Draft number 107 in the books. In the books. What a time to be alive. 107 drafts. We'll be back tomorrow with draft 108 with Spags on Splash Play. I'll be back on Wednesday for 109 and 1010 on Best Ball Breakfast with Pat Corain and Sean Siegel. I'm still booking uh, Randomizer and Best Ball After Dark this week. Also, make sure you guys are subscribed to the Fantasy Life newsletter. We're going to be ramping up uh, those additions here shortly. As we enter August, I wrote today about the Jonathan Taylor situation over the weekend. If you guys want to check that out, it's a free newsletter, fantasylife.com. We also have a new website as well um, that's come together very nicely. So check it out. All kinds of great work going on over there at Fantasy Life. On Ship Chasing, we'll be drafting again this weekend on the NFFC, another 34-round draft. So... We're firing all kinds of good stuff going on here. Like I said, um, immediately following this stream, or I guess in 20 minutes, they'll kick off around noon. You can head over to ADP Chasing. And I think that's it. I think that is it for me today. You guys were quick today. 
two drafts. We even did a 10 minute intermission. We're all under a buck 40. It's because I knew uh, Frog. Frog put the baby down. I knew he, he he wanted to have a two hour nap on tap, but I knew it was a buck 40. Trust me. You always got to shave 20 minutes off what you actually think the nap is going to be. I appreciate you guys all. Check out ADP Chasing. Keep your eyes peeled for the How to Combat a Wide Receiver Avalanche video that's going to be dropping on the Deposit Kingdom YouTube channel later today. And join us in the Deposit Kingdom. Truly uh, the best place for best ball and NFL conversation right now. All the channels are popping off. We got the Badge Bros in there. We got the NFL Best Ball channel. We got the Best Ball Breakfast channel. We got the Ship Chasing all of that good stuff. Appreciate you guys all. Have a wonderful rest of your Monday. I'll see you guys uh, tomorrow. Peace.